Now that we've looked at the basic components of a communication strategy, we look more closely at the specific situation in development cooperation. What is special and what are usual mistakes that you can avoid easily? Getting your goals straight. When building your communication strategy, it's important that you look at your project goals again as a team. Figure out what it is exactly you want to say to people to achieve those goals. You probably find that you have to reframe the goals into more tangible goals and objectives. Remember, communication's goals always have to support the overall goals of a project. If they don't relate directly to a project goal, don't put them into your communication strategy. Otherwise, you're diluting your strategy into a collection of communications activities the project happens to carry out. This is what often happens in communications strategies in development cooperation. They quickly morph from being goal-centric strategic thinking and become a piece of writing that lists everything in terms of communications done by the project. Have a look at your official project documentation or the commission contract or whatever it's called with the donor ministry, for example. And in that, you'll find the project goals spelled out and broken down into separate tangible targets, usually relating to the subject areas of your project. Maybe it even mentions the metrics the M&E advisor is expected to use to gauge progress and impact. You probably won't find these kind of details for your communications goals, which has to do with the fact that there are usually no communications experts involved in conceptualizing the projects, except for some instances when the project is fitted with a special communications component or focus, like a behavior change component, for example. So in other words, look which kind of communications goals you can find and on top sift through the project's goals one by one and figure out which of them can be supported with communications activity in a useful and, and effective way. <clears throat> Finally, list the communications goals and put them into priority order. In terms of your messages, set up a meeting with your colleagues or even with your stakeholders and brainstorm what kind of messages you can come up with for your project. Make sure they relate to specific project and communications goals and they are actionable. Then discuss which formats would be feasible for which messages and for which target audience. Not every message is for every target group and not every format is suitable for every audience either. One of the most common mistakes when implementing strategic communications and development cooperation is to first distinguish between target groups, but then to address them all with the same set of messages. Another issue in development cooperation are messages that aim to raise awareness or show that the project does good work. Try to go beyond that. Your messages should not only carry factual information, but also trigger to move somebody into some kind of action. Awareness is not really worth much if it doesn't translate into some kind of action. Besides, awareness raising is vague and is hard to measure. This is what you should be aiming for. Think of calls to action as part of your messaging. These are important points for your message planning. We will come back to awareness raising and having to demonstrate what's great about your project. So, for development cooperation communications, it makes sense to discuss content as a separate element for messages. A lot of communications output in real life development cooperation is what I just advised against. It operates without proper messages, especially no calls to action. It aims at raising awareness or showing people that good work is being done. We could call this sort of a meta message, this kind of content, because in a way the content as such becomes the permanent message. You can certainly view this critically, as I do, but 
here is unfortunately not the place to discuss this further. If the project demands, demands to aim at these kinds of goals, it's your job to get this approach into gear. Now, a second objective common in development cooperation that calls for a constant content flow without succinct messages is knowledge exchange. Behind communicating the so-called lessons learned is the wish of projects to make the experiences they gain during implementation widely available to others. Therefore, it does make perfect sense to set up proper planning of your content flow towards your, to towards your tools. In some cases, it might even be a good idea to consider a complementary content strategy that integrates with your communication strategy. You will have to properly define your audience. Think of the types of individuals in your groups. For example, you'll find to come up with a term like policy makers as a group alone won't really help you much later on. Brainstorm about what a typical person in that category looks like. What does he or she do? What does he or she think of a particular issue? Where do they work? Then it's likely that you'll come to realize that people in your target group are very diverse in a number of ways. And some might be very important for you or targeting them with your messages, others are not. So you need to come up with subgroups. Let's say you come up with farmers as a target group. The audience segment of farmers can be broken down into many subgroups based on the size of their farms, types of crops grown, do they keep livestock, degree of mechanization on their farm, and much, much more. Your job is to find out which subsegments make sense for your approach, not, necess not necessarily what seems obvious for your approach. Maybe you find gender does not make a difference in your case, though it's a distinction that is commonly made in development cooperation. Another way to go about the audience is that fits many, uh, another way that fits many development projects very well is running a stakeholder analysis. I will get into this again. Now, the channels on which you want to communicate should be the ones where your audience spends time. To be effective, you have to be on their channels. Use the tools that can reach them there. It's not a good idea to expect them to come to you. Obvious? Well, this is something many development cooperation projects do not really digest enough. They choose tools for a strategy that they use already or those that have been indicated in the project documentation by someone who did not really think about the actual communication situation of the upcoming project or who thought that the project would figure it out but now they are taking the wording in the documentation very literal. So for example if you want to communicate to mothers ages 15 to 30 you would think about where do these women meet? Where do they get their information from? And where are they seeking information? Which could be in different places. Maybe you choose to put your information on Instagram instead of trying to make them come to your website. You might figure out that they look at Insta, but actually many of their decisions are made by their mothers-in-law. So you need to find the tools to reach the mothers-in-law. And to be clear, dropping information on a website without considering how it will be found is unlikely to work well. 